The world may have avoided a war. After days of fierce clashes in the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region, Armenia and Azerbaijan have finally signed a deal to end the war. The two warring nations signed an agreement with Russia to end the fierce fighting and conflict in the disputed region. The pact signed with Russia calls for the deployment of nearly 2,000 Russian peacekeepers and territorial concessions as well. Meanwhile, Russia has started to deploy its peacekeeping troops to the war-ravaged enclave as part of the peace deal. The deal agreed by Armenia, Azerbaijan and Russia ushered in a full ceasefire from midnight, freezing the conflict. Under the deal, Azerbaijan will get to keep all of its territorial gains, including the enclave's second city of Shusha, and ethnic Armenian forces must hand over control of other territories between now and December. Russian peacekeepers will be deployed in the region for at least five years. Azerbaijan has called the Karabakh ceasefire a surrender by Armenia. Azeri President Aliyev described the deal as historical. In a televised address, Aliyev said, with this agreement, we end the occupation of Azerbaijani lands. Meanwhile, hundreds of people took to the streets of the Azerbaijani capital, Baku, to celebrate the announcement of the agreement. Baku residents expressed their delight over the recent development. Armenian Prime Minister took to social media to announce the peace deal. Pashinyan said on Facebook that he signed an agreement with the presidents of Azerbaijan and Russia to halt the fighting that has raged since late September. He wrote that the decision was unbelievably painful for him. Protests have started to erupt across Yerevan following the announcement of the peace deal. Armenian protesters are angry over the country's agreement to end the fighting with Azerbaijan over the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region. They stormed the government headquarters in the capital city. Chaotic scenes erupted inside Armenia's parliament in the early hours of Tuesday as protesters, angry at a ceasefire deal, seized control of its chamber to denounce the country's leadership. Hundreds of people stormed into the building to express their dissent. Several protesters also gathered outside Prime Minister's official residence to call out on government. Prime Minister Pashinyan said those involved in the unrest would be punished severely. The Boshner Sarkovneri Mech Khan, Orinak Oligarchneri, Espesasat, Hans Havor Hamber, Eten Martiken, Oker Xantari, Gohatsen and Zimboriz, Oker Xantari, Gohatsen and Banakiz, Oker Xantari, Hark Chen Pechare, Esore Kelen, Asgi. We on correspondent Julia Chapman uh, joins us from Moscow for more details on this. Julia, uh, you know, what's the hope that this ceasefire will last? Because there have been attempts to strike a deal earlier, but uh, it did not stop the violence. What's the hope that this time it will be the end of this conflict? Because certainly Armenian leadership is facing a lot of uh, unrest back home. They are facing protests. Uh, protesters are demanding why Armenia signed this peace deal. So what's the hope really that the war will end?
seems to be a much more substantive agreement between Armenia and Azerbaijan than the previous ceasefires that were brokered by Moscow, France and the United States, none of which held. Uh, they were all broken within minutes of coming into effect. This time things are looking very different indeed and that is mostly because it appears that Armenia has been forced into a position where it has had to back down. It has signed an agreement saying that it will withdraw its military from positions in Nagorno-Karabakh and it has also ceded some territory to Azerbaijan. So a really significant capitulation and that's the word being used by the Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev who is really declaring victory. Although of course Azerbaijan has not managed to retake the entirety of Nagorno-Karabakh and crucially the capital Stepana Kurt remains under Armenian control. Russian peacekeepers are now being sent there to try to maintain the situation as it is and protect civilians in the capital and in other parts of the disputed territory. But these are significant significant concessions from the Armenian side and as you say they haven't gone down very well amongst the Armenian people with protests breaking out in Yerevan with protesters accusing the Prime Minister of giving up essentially in the fight in Nagorno-Karabakh and of course the reason for that is that Armenia has been overpowered by Azerbaijan whose military is much stronger much better resourced and simply uh, from a military perspective there was no chance that Armenia could have won this conflict without any external help and that was help that Russia its ally was simply not willing to give preferring instead to maintain neutrality on this matter right but uh, you know a Russian intervention has led to this uh, situation uh, that Armenia and Azerbaijan have sat down on the table they have allowed Russian peacekeepers to enter the region as well and stay there for the next five years so there is an attempt to uh, uh, to maintain peace in this region at least till the Russian peacekeepers are there but a Russian helicopter was also shot down over Armenia and Azerbaijan has claimed responsibility for that and offered even to compensate Russia for the loss so what's the role Russia has played and What's the long-term solution that Russia is looking at as far as the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict is concerned? Well, that's right. Last night, when that Russian helicopter was shot down, killing two servicemen and injuring one more, it was certainly uh, concern, there were concerns building that this was going to be an escalation of the situation in Nagorno-Karabakh, in the fighting in the wider region that could potentially have drawn in Russia. Instead, it de-escalated very quickly with Azerbaijan apologizing for accidentally shooting down the helicopter, uh, which came down in Armenian territory, not far from the Azerbaijani border. But but instead, overnight, there's this been this remarkable development whereby Russia has instead brokered a peace deal between the two countries, choosing not to rise to the provocation of its helicopter being shot down. Instead, as I say, trying to maintain neutrality. As for how long this situation can hold, that really does depend on whether Azerbaijan is satisfied with what it has won in this peace deal with the territorial gains that it has made over the last six weeks and whether Armenia is really willing to back down as its Prime Minister has suggested overnight in that very controversial statement where he said it was a painful decision to come to this agreement but it was a decision that was made in consultation with military experts who appear to be advising the Prime Minister Nicole Pashinyan that there was really no way for Armenia to win this war. Julia, uh, we all can hope uh, that uh, long-term conflict can be avoided and uh, we'll uh, come to you for any further developments. As of now, a deal has been struck between Armenia and Azerbaijan to end the fighting with Armenia agreeing to concede certain locations in Nagorno-Karabakh that have been captured by Azerbaijan.